Hey guys, this is Srini and you're watching uh, basic Python tutorials on my channel Python for Microscopists on YouTube. And uh, these uh, tutorials are intended for beginner coders who are students, researchers, uh, or anyone who is interested in image processing using Python, especially with an interest in automating these image processing tasks. Now, if you are a mid-level and advanced coder, I'm not sure uh, if you will find any additional uh, information from my channel, so please go ahead and watch it, but uh, I'm pretty sure you'll spend your time much better if you find some other advanced uh, videos on YouTube. So uh, today, let's get started. And uh, in this lecture, we are going to talk about what uh, digital images are and what do we mean by digital image processing. Uh, and I'm pretty sure most of you are aware of uh, a digital image. You know, this is nothing but a bunch of numbers in a matrix form. So a digital image, you know, you have, uh, uh, let's say, of size 500 by 500 pixels. That means there are 500 numbers in X, 500 numbers in Y, and each number means uh, an in uh, intensity. So the intensity of that specific pixel. The intensity can be uh, one value if it is a gray level image. And it can range from, let's say, for an 8-bit image, 0 to 255 values. And 255 being a white pixel, 0 being a black pixel, and some gray pixel in between 0 to 255. Now, if it is a color image, it can be 0 to 255 for red, 0 to 255 for green, and 0 to 255 for blue. So that means we have three channels, or uh, it makes up of uh, these three uh, a combination of these three uh, channels. So these are, uh, and actually, in fact, let's understand this a bit better by opening an image. And for scientific image processing, I'm pretty sure most of you, if you are uh, coming from image processing background, have used ImageJ. This is a great piece of software that lets you perform one-off image processing tasks. And I say one-off because if you would like to do advanced automation, if you would like to do advanced algorithms where you want to follow, like create a workflow and pipeline, then uh, uh, programming is probably the best way to do. And so for one-off uh, uh, operations, this is great because if you go to process, for example, and if you would like to sharpen, smooth this image, it's just one click. So it's a great piece of software. So uh, let's zoom on to one of these regions to understand exactly. First of all, this image is uh, 639 by 513 pixels, which means, let me zoom out. In X, we have 639 pixels. In Y, we have 513. This is a, uh, obviously you can see, this is a color image. This is a RGB image. And I can change the mode of this image. I can go to an 8-bit image, for example. Then it actually tells me this is an 8-bit image. Yeah? If I put my mouse anywhere, you see the value up here, like uh, you should see a value, and it says 137. At pixel number 400 in X and 95 in Y, the value of that pixel is 137. If I go to a dark region, the value is 1. If I go to a brighter region, value is uh, even higher, 194 or something. I can look at the histogram. I can actually look at uh, how the pixels are distributed. I have a lot of dark pixels here. And a few gray pixels, I don't have any pixels that are like completely bright in this case. Now, if I revert back to my original image, uh, meaning I have a color image, at every pixel, it now the value is three numbers because I have a value for red, I have a value for green, and one for, uh, one for blue. So let me go ahead and zoom in to one of these regions. Now you can start to see individual pixels here, yeah? individual pixels. So when I zoom in and I'm on the green pixel here and you see the value there is uh, 31, 249, and 93 RGB. The middle one is green. So I have more green, higher number for green. Going to blue, higher number for blue. Okay. And if I go to red, obviously higher number for red and it's that pixel is made up of a little bit of, it's not pure red. It is red with a little bit of green and blue. If I go to a dark region, again, it's almost zeros there. So I, I think uh, uh, now you understand what uh, a digital image is and what do we mean by digital image processing. So we understand that this is nothing but a bunch of numbers. By manipulating the numbers, 
we can actually change uh, certain, uh, uh, you know, uh, we can extract certain information. For example, if I go to adjusting brightness and contrast, yeah, let's actually uh, keep an eye, let's keep an eye on one of the pixels so we can uh, consistently uh, check what's going on. So if we keep an eye on this pixel 393 by 98, and if we go here and uh, adjust the brightness, for example, yeah, so if we go back to that pixel, so the value goes to 59, 155, and 65. If I key increase the, let's go back, and the value is 109, 205, 115. So this is nothing but linearly, when I change the brightness, increasing the value of all of these pixels. So when you change contrast, something similar happens, yeah? Uh, meaning uh, some math is applied to this image. If I go back, if I revert this, for example, if I revert this and if I apply, uh, I think one of the filters here is a Gaussian blur. So when I apply Gaussian blur filter, it's going to ask me, okay, what is the radius? Let's keep uh, it to two. And when I click on preview, you can see that uh, the, the image is blurred. In fact, if I zoom out, let's apply this and zoom out. You can see that the image is blurred right there. And sometimes we would like to do this for whatever reason. Yeah, we would like to blur the image, sharpen the image and everything. but the core point here is every time you do some of these operations, it's actually applying some sort of a mathematical uh, uh, algorithm on top of this image. For blur, I uh, may have, uh, for blur, it's actually applying some sort of a matrix at every pixel, matrix multiplication at every pixel, yeah? So luckily we don't have to understand all of that. It would be nice if you understand it so you can better devise your uh, filters when you're doing your image processing. But uh, it, using this point and click software, it's pretty easy to do these things. But how difficult is it with Python? So let me open, uh, again, we're not gonna talk about exactly what the interface is and everything yet, but keep an eye on this code here, yeah? The first line, I'm just importing a library that I want to process the images. The second line, I'm going to read an image, which is nothing but my test image dot jpeg which is located under the images folder which is located under the images folder and uh, a value of zero means uh, i'm reading uh, this image as a gray level image and if i change this to value of one it would be reading it as color we'll do that in a second and the next line i'm showing an image i'm showing uh, displaying the image right on the screen and then I'm printing the shape of this image right here, and the last two lines are there so I can kill this uh, display window. So when I run this code, uh, the image is open. Again, this is uh, opened as a gray level image. And if you look at the dimensions right there, this 513 and 639 is nothing but uh, the shape of this image, yeah? Uh, so that is 513 by 639. Now, let me kill this and open this as a color image, and let's have a look at what the shape of this image is. So again, now it opened it as a color image, and now the shape is 513, 639, and three. So it's not just a two-dimensional matrix anymore. Now I have three such two-dimensional matrices, matrices, yeah? So I have uh, one image of red, which is 513 by 639, green, same size, blue, same size. So this is, this is how uh, yeah, easy uh, you know, to read an image. Now, how difficult is it to actually process these images? Well, uh, let's actually do a quick edge detection. And uh, how do we do edge detection? So let me go and Google search for, uh, let's say uh, Python edge detection, or I know in scikit image, I've already done that search uh, before. So in scikit image, there is, uh, scikit image is a library. Uh, that contains a lot of operations. So let's actually look at scikit image uh, edge operators. Okay, so uh, you should see that, okay, there are multiple edge operators. There's something called Roberts, Sobel. Uh, the only thing I re uh, recognize is Sobel. So let's copy this line and only read Sobel for now. Okay, so I'm gonna copy that line and I'm going to p paste up here as part of my import and I do not want Roberts, so let's just delete Roberts. That's it, I imported Sobel. Now, uh, what do I want to do? I want to call something as uh, image two, which is our edge detected image. And this is nothing but Sobel of our image. That's it, I'm done. It has 
uh, that line will perform the Sobel-based edge detection. That's and but let's go ahead and show that image. So cv2 dot im show this line, and I'll call this edge. And which image do we need to display? Image number two. Okay, that's pretty much it. Let's go ahead and run this code. And here is my original image, and here is the Sobel edge detected image. That's it. It's as easy as doing this. That's exactly why I encourage you guys who have uh, who never tried programming, you know, to try programming using Python. This is uh, as easy as it gets. And this is a great skill to add to your resume. So let's continue learning in uh, our next video. Thank you very much.